Good evening. Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Welcome back to Ilal Life. My name is Faraz Patel. We'd like to thank you, the viewer, for staying with us. And I would like to also thank my colleague Lukman Shadrach for taking you through that first part of the show. Now, yesterday, of course, the National Assembly had agreed to a motion to suspend diplomatic relations with Israel until such a time it agrees to a full ceasefire. This is one of the two amendments tabled by the ANC to the original motion as introduced by the EFF for debate last week. The other condition is that Israel commits to binding a UN-led negotiation that must result in lasting peace. The question is, what does this do to create a strength in how South, South Africa positions itself in terms of geopolitics? Joining me now, I'd like to welcome political analyst uh, Dr. Levi Ndau. Dr. Ndau, good day and thank you so much for joining us here on Hilal Live. Thank you for having me. Good day to you. Good day to the viewers as well. Yeah, it's an absolute pleasure. Dr. Ndau, okay, let's start, of course, what had happened in Parliament. Uh, given, of course, 24 hours before that, Israel recalls its uh, ambassador. Uh, it was a formality, wasn't it, that the overwhelming majority was going to be in favor of suspending those diplomatic relations? Indeed. Um, the ground has been prepared um, for such to happen, and uh, you would um, uh, agree with me that there has been numerous calls outside uh, parliament by different groupings of society uh, who were condemning what was happening between Israel and Palestine. But also at the same time, we have also observed that uh, Israel had been quite proactive after making such observations, and they took a decision to uh, recall their ambassador, and they say that they wanted to make an assessment or consultation in order to check the, their actual status in uh, South Africa. My sense of the matter is that um, South Africa stands on the Israel-Palestine conflict has uh, quite been consistent in the sense that They've always been in support of the uh, two-state uh, approach and uh, the condemnation of any form of violence and the promotion of negotiations and peace. And I think in the absence of such, South Africa had to take a stance, which might some might say it's, a, it's harsh, but some will say it is quite justifiable. Dr. Ndau, yesterday during that BRICS uh, 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 Obviously, the world leaders are making opening statements. President Sal Ramaphosa, and of course, with regards to domestic problems, there's been a lot of criticism that he has lacked the backbone with regards to making the hard decisions. But when it's come to, especially this conflict, and especially what we've seen, uh, what has happened in Gaza for the last few weeks, the fact that he has called for there to be war crime charges against Benjamin Netanyahu and his government, I mean, that's a strong statement, isn't it? Given that uh, two major superpowers in China, Xi Jinping and Russia's Vladimir Putin, have been very muted in their calls for, the charge, uh, for these war crime charges. But President Sol Ramaphosa, you know, held no punches in making those statements. That is a strong message, isn't it, from a South African perspective? South Africa has, on numerous occasions, been given the responsibility for mediations, to lead uh, uh, negotiations uh, where there is conflict all over the world. And at the same time, South Africa's sovereignty and its own stance and positions on matters of diplomacy and international relations has to be very clear and be felt. And I think South Africa's approach now has been to say it will be important for the international community, the, the whole world to understand South Africa's standpoint and the advantage that South Africa had in chairing the BRICS um, uh, meeting was quite strategic in the sense that um, President Ramaphosa had to set the tone for the meeting and he, he used that opportunity to clearly articulate South Africa's position and the extent in which the Israel-Palestine conflict has a, a, a negative impact on the politics of the world. And I think it is also time that um, world leaders, 
who have got influence in the international political arena should actually stand up and ensure that indeed there is peace and uh, the end to any form of violence and abuse of humanity. Dr. Ndau, I, I want to take you back to, of course, um, last year when the Russia-Ukraine conflict broke out and then obviously earlier this year with the Lady R situation. Um, the South Africa could have easily caved in being that it's a developed country and it's part of the global south, but there was strength there, wasn't there? Uh, first, of course, from Deputy, uh, the uh, Minister of International Relations, Dr. Naleri Pandor, and also President Cyril Ramaphosa and his cabinet in terms of saying, look, we're going to maintain the neutral stance on the war. And then with regards to the Lady R, we will not be bullied, especially that from the United States of America, when its ambassador, yeah, Ruben Brigadi, made those statements that, listen, there were, uh, there were weapons being loaded on to that ship. So South Africa stood their ground, didn't they, especially in those two aspects? Well, South Africa is uh, gradually making a huge impact in the international political space. But at the same time, South Africa is um, demonstrating that indeed it, uh, uh, we are a sovereign state that is able to take its own decisions and positions in its best interest. And I think what South Africa has done, in my view, has been to be quite consistent, especially when you look at the Russia-Ukraine war uh, in terms of its neutrality, but at the same time putting an emphasis on the fact that they do not condone any form of conflict and any form of invasion nor aggression by any other country. So we, we, we stand uh, to be now identified as a country that is quite firm on its positions. South Africa has indeed refused to be bullied by the U.S. on the matter of um, the Lady Airship. And that is why uh, South Africa said they should be given sufficient space to be able to conduct their own investigation. And indeed, they've been exonerated by such investigations. Dr. Ndau, that sovereignty question, um, it's quite clear now that South Africa are managing it very, very well. Uh, given the 30 years of democracy when it does approach next year, how would you rate South Africa's you know, management of the uh, sovereignty and the fact that, as you mentioned, they are able to play quite a significant role, not only in conflicts in Africa, but also outside of the continent? Well, sovereignty is... Um is nothing if indeed it's not being properly exercised. But also at the same time, sovereignty should, should not be exercised at the expense of uh, the citizens. And it, it's not a license to take decisions that have got negative implications on its citizens. I think what uh, South Africa is trying to do is that South Africa has taken quite a considerable amount of time in terms of um, identifying the nations or countries that they can relate with, and also in finding its own stance on international uh, uh, issues. And that is why South Africa has taken a decision to be a leading force in terms of, of ensuring that where there is conflict or where there are misunderstandings among states, South Africa will be amongst the countries that are in the forefront of ensuring that peace and stability is actually being maintained. South Africa has played a significant role in the SADC region, in the African continent, and indeed in international political space in terms of ensuring that uh, they carry the hope of peace and uh, they uh, constantly send the message of uh, stability and good government governance among states. So I think South Africa has been able to do very, very well in these trying times. Dr. Ndau, thank you so much for joining us here on Hilal Live. You're always welcome. Thank you so much. Uh, absolute pleasure. That's Dr. Levi and our political analyst just breaking us down. Uh, South Africa's show of strength when it comes to geopolitical issues. A lot of challenges we have in our country, but commendability has to be there for the way the South African government, of course, has taken their stance 
uh, with regards to the war on Gaza. After the break, we, we stick with, obviously, the war on Gaza. There's a ceasefire that has been agreed. It's only for four days, of course, between uh, the Israeli government and Hamas. It was mediated by Qatar. I'll be speaking to Abdullah Rifat after the break. Uh, he's going to talk to us about does this make a difference or does it not make a difference and how much will this mean for the people of Gaza, of course, who have just been under so much in the last 46 days. Do stay tuned for that conversation. <laughs> 